Hey everybody, this is Perch. I, I was thinking about sales today and, and kind of this, um, this, this weird thing that happened to me, and I, I'll describe it for all of you, is, is kind of is a boomerang type effect. And I was thinking about this because um, somebody had posted a comment to one of my videos. It's like, I, it rarely happens these days. Uh, the people who really get annoyed and pissed off by what I say, either because uh, they think I'm uh, on too right or too left or whatever, or I'm, I waffle between the two, a fence sitter. You you don't see those posts very much anymore. People have kind of, you know, th there's just better people. They finally took my advice and they're like, there's better people to go antagonize and, and try and piss off because I'm not going to do a big reaction video to your, your, your video and everything else. Every now and then I'll get, again, I'll get an email or something like, hey, this guy, he's got a thumbnail, I'll like, Perch is attacking me. And it's like, it's so clearly a, you know, bait to try and get a, a feud going for reasons I don't understand, but I'm, but I don't enjoy it. And, um, I haven't been to a lot of these, uh, people would send me links to like Kiwi farms and things. I'd go over there and they'd be like, Perch is a douche, you know? And it's like, yeah, okay. I, I mean, sure. Sure. Why not? Perch is a fin sitter. I hate his fin sitter takes. All right. I mean, fine. Uh, but I, but I want to explain where some of the, um, because if, there, if you really want to piss off people, you say things like, you know, Hey, there are good people on both sides. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but the, the idea I, I, I have at least some shred of integrity, or at least I, I'd like to believe I do. Everybody is a hypocrite at different times in their life. Every single person you are, I am, we've, we've all said something, we believe it and we change our mind. New information comes in. There's lots of different reasons why, you know, your position shifts. It's actually really spooky. Forget about YouTube and the culture war and all that shit, but it's, it's really spooky if your opinion never shifts. Like you are, you have the exact same viewpoints as when you were 14 years old, you are now 40 and uh, you're the exact same person. To me, that's a scary human being. That's somebody who's, uh, when presented with lots of new experiences in life and ideas and everything else, they just, they just, they, they stay exactly the way they are. Can you, I mean, I rarely run into those people, by the way, there's, there's, it's very, very rare. You run somebody who just does not change because life impacts you and changes you. It's supposed to, that is, that is living. Um, so I, you know, but you know, just what, what I find you know, annoying about this, uh, the, you know, the culture where the online social aspect of this is that we're all expected to believe things that, that we know in real life are not true. And I, I mean, I'll give you an example because it's coming into political season and you have people like, uh, like the, like the various accounts, there's one, uh, there's Brooklyn dad and it's clearly paid for by Democrats or, you know, at least, you know, help funded and everything else because these posts are absurd. It's like everything is, you know, the Republicans fault and every good thing is uh, the Democrats, you know, claim everything. It's like I went to the park today. It was a beautiful day. Thank goodness for Democrats. And then I, my car started to run out of gas and I hit a red light. Those fucking Republicans. It just, it's, it's, this, it's absurd stuff. And you, you see this and you're like, well, you're clearly a shill. You're clearly a, you're not a human being. You are just a, a billboard. It's like, you know, driving down the street and seeing billboards for like, this, we have the best car insurance. It's like, I, I'm okay. Maybe I, I, who knows, but it, they're just, they're just silly advertising claims. They're not people. And you're used to seeing advertising for companies, but you know, the new, what social media has given us are, are humans that are like walking billboards. That's all they are. They have no credibility. They have no integrity, but I think part of having integrity is, is, you know, there's a couple tenants to that. One is admitting when you're wrong, like, Hey, this like, like, you know, recently for me, X-Men 97. I said, I think this show is going to be shitty. I said that because the animation looks shitty and Disney's, uh, Disney Plus's animation was pretty shitty in general. Um, but I watched it. I was like, nah, it's pretty good. I was wrong. It's not that hard to say that. And, uh, you know, despite what some people online will tell you, that doesn't cause your dick to shrink. It, it, you know, you're, you're still the same man you always were. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that's one. I'm being wrong. The other is, not being completely tribal. Um, I have, as you've, anybody who's listened to this show, I've been pretty open with uh, my various beliefs in all different ways. Um, and I have friends that cross all over the political spectrum. And the common thread here is that we're normal human beings that try and get shit done and, and get along. And that's the common thread. And so if I see somebody who lines up with me 
you know, politically or lines up with me uh, with a comic book. Like I, if I like the X-Men, somebody else comes around who likes the X-Men, but that person starts saying crazy shit. You know, I'm not going to go, well, I, I, I can't criticize this guy because, because uh, he believes the same way as me. So I, I better just, you know, better just uh, keep quiet. I don't, I, you know, and I'm not going to go at people. And by the way, on this channel's history, I, I don't go at people. I've gotten annoyed. You know, I've, I've gotten annoyed when people poke and poke and poke, but generally that's rare. You know, thousands of videos I've done this, you know, a small handful of times. And part of that is me just learning, you know, again, in the spirit of, you know, I'm wrong when somebody is just an annoying, you know, pest and you, you finally turn around and smack them. All you've done is give them content for, for eight, 12 hours of live streams. I made some comment about one, you know, a couple tough guys were like, oh, we could take perch in a fight. And I'm like, fuck it. Okay, fine. Let's do it. And this turned into a, like dozens, not not just a few, but dozens hours of live stream of like, can you believe Birch is crazy? I don't know. Why would he say this about me? I, uh, I'm an alpha male, but uh. anyway, um, this, for all I know, this is going to create another live stream. But, but my point is um, just, you know, if, if you are looking for a sycophant and somebody who just does nothing but agree with you, then you're not getting somebody with integrity. You're getting a, you're getting a puppet. You might as well just, you know, buddy up to AI and just, you know, AI will tell you what you want to hear all the time. So just, just, you know, go there. There's no point to getting another, another human being. But people ask me I, this, this comment of, well, Perch is a fence sitter. So um, I want to explain a little bit where this perspective comes from. First off, the fence sitting comes from, hey, if you analyze something, you can see multiple sides, you can talk through multiple sides, and then you make a choice. You don't just stay, you know, stay in the middle ground assessing forever, but it's good to see all sides of things. This can be something benign, like where should I buy a house? Should I buy it more in the country or more in the city? Well, in the city, I'm closer to services, the easier I could walk to a grocery store, fine. But in the country, it's going to be quieter, more land, you know, benefits. That, that Weighing those options is not been sitting, it's weighing your options. Now, if 20 years later, you still haven't bought a house because you're, you're paralyzed by the choices, then you've got problems, but generally you make a, you make a call. Um, but the comic industry in particular is so disingenuous around some of these choices and some of these data points that it really requires you to do the analysis. And, and I mentioned at the beginning, this is about numbers. So I'm going to give you the example of the numbers. I've done those uh, sales videos and I've actually started to produce material to do some more because they, they're fun. They just take more work. Um, and I remember when I was doing Miss um, Marvel and more Squirrel Girl. So Squirrel Girl, I did the sales analysis from and it was not very exciting. It never had good sales. And when I say good sales, my definition of that is, you know, per industry metric, it never was in the like 50, 100,000 copies sold. It was never anywhere close to that. It, it hovered toward the bottom of what Marvel sold. And this is, this is factual. It's not a you know, subjective opinion. It's, it's the, the numbers. Numbers don't lie. You know, as Scott Steiner tells us, numbers don't lie. Um, but, it, you know, it just it didn't sell well. And I don't know if any of you know, but a little kind of backstage peek at the uh, Pert show, of all the number of videos I did, there were two that just got people like frothing at the mouth angry. And in the spirit of two sides, you know, one from each side. One was I did the sales analysis for Jason Aaron's Thor. And in that one, I pointed out again, actually, the numbers prove it, that the Jane Foster Thor run did well from a numbers perspective. It didn't tank, which was the, the narrative at the time from a lot of the anti-SJW uh, channels. It was that run tanked. And when I posted that out, fuck, I made people mad, like angry mad. I had people, I, I mean, that, that tipped so many people over. I had males telling me to go kill myself. I had just like, you know, you are a shill. You take it up the ass from Disney. Just the, the most uh, ironically anti-Christian things, if you will, for a bunch of quote unquote Christians about uh, what a horrible person I was for printing publicly available numbers. The other one was Squirrel Girl. Uh, the Squirrel Girl sales analysis um, got people frothing angry on, quote unquote, the other side. And what that was, I, and I, I never fully understood why people went in on that one. 
But basically, a number showed it didn't do well. And once again, I had emails going, you know, you should kill yourself. I hate you. I'm going to find out where you work. I'm going to ruin you. Why are you a Nazi? Just just all over the place around this, this Squirrel Girl uh, narrative. And part of that was, you know, claims of your lying. Those are the numbers are higher than that. Well, they weren't. The numbers, again, were factual record that were published. So they were there. And then the, the argument shifted to, well, you're not reporting on the trades. So I actually dug up the trades, reported those numbers too. They were not, they were not, you know, publicly available information. And then it was, well, they're all being sold on Amazon. And it's like, well, here are the Amazon numbers. We can see that too. We can see the book scan. We can see, you know, where they sit in the rankings. Again, publicly available information. Any of you can also get it. And then finally, people landed on the, the, yeah, but it's selling four times the amount on digital. Digital is where it's at. And the digital numbers are not public. Um, exactly. You can, you can kind of back into just hit traffic and other things, but you could see at least some attention, but you don't have, you know, factual numbers on digital that were being produced. And so people landed on that one and really held on to it. It's like, well, Perch is a liar and a Nazi because he says Squirrel Girl is not successful and he posts these numbers, but he doesn't give you the full story because there's actually hundreds of thousands of copies. And I'm not making this up. These were claims sold on digital. And so I didn't have numbers, so I couldn't refute that claim, but I did have common sense. And uh, when Squirrel Girl was uh, canceled and they quit making it and uh, Marvel shuttered many of its digital efforts, I said, I, hang on, I don't quite understand. If Squirrel Girl was selling, again, the claim from people, including people who wanted to work at Marvel and succeeded, they now do work at Marvel. The claim was that Squirrel Girl is selling over 150,000 copies on digital, okay? Print run was 18,000 copies, okay? But 150,000 copies are being made on digital. So that is almost 10 times the amount of copies going out on digital. If Marvel is making that money on digital, why is the book canceled? Because by any, by any metric, if that was what it was bringing in, I, I mean... It would be one of Marvel's top selling books and you would keep that digital platform alive. You'd be pushing more things there. If, if Marvel was, was moving over 100,000 copies of titles on digital, you, you, they would not be abandoning the platform. And that response, I, 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 so I positioned, I'm like, look, I, help me understand common sense here. Why would Marvel walk away from money? And this was a moment I was thinking of, which um, kind of caps off this whole video is that statement, why would Marvel walk away from money? I achieved something that very rarely has been achieved in comics. I got unity between the SJW and anti-SJW crowd because they finally came together in agreement on one point, which is uh, Marvel doesn't care about money. Marvel, a corporation owned by a giant corporation, Disney, um, will happily print things in order to further one side saying equality and diversity, or the other side saying woke agenda. But both sides were in agreement that Squirrel Girl, a title that was selling in the 20,000s and sometimes lower as on average, um, what had this magical, huge sales numbers on digital, killed their digital program, canceled the title because Marvel hates money and or Marvel is willing to promote, you know, uh, diversity as a charity. None of which is true, by the way. None, none, that is, again, factually insane to say that. But when people say, hey, Perch, why are you such a fence sitter? Why, you, why do you look at both sides? A couple answers to that, which hopefully you know by just listening to the last 12 minutes or so. Well, one reason is both sides at different times have the capacity to be fucking insane. That's one reason. And second, it, if you don't evaluate both sides, you can find yourself saying incredibly stupid things like Disney regularly produces content at a massive loss just because of, you know, the message. And again, again that, that, that defies all logic. You have to be very, you know, <laughs> it's funny, very blue-pilled to actually believe that. And, and don't say, but, but, but wait, there was this one time. No, no, just stop. 
people make dumb decisions in corporations, certainly all the time, and they do lose money all the time. But the idea that you have a comic book, not selling in print, selling 10 times as much in digital, and they're going to cancel it, shutter their digital service, and shut it all down. But you still believe that book was selling 150,000 plus copies on digital. You're a sucker. <laughs> There's just no other way to put it. You're, a, you're, an, you're an idiot if you believe this is true. And, and that doesn't serve anyone. So anyway, it's, it's a funny space. I, you know, it's, what is funny, I remember um, in college, uh, and I'll wrap the video up here, but I remember being in college and I was taking a, a class on debate and ethics, uh, which was a dumb class. It was, you know, it, look, you took classes in college that you needed to graduate and then you had a handful of electives and you looked at the ones that were either going to be personally enjoyable or what you believed was super easy and you took those. One of those I took was debate and ethics, which I thought would be super easy. It wound up being stupid and aggravating and I did not like it. Uh, because there was very little debate and very little ethics, but there was a lot of just nonsensical bullshit in it. So uh, I was bored a lot of the time in that class. Um, but at the time, we were debating uh, the internet because the internet was just slowly coming out. I am old. So, you know, AOL was starting to like people are like, ooh, there's this AOL thing. It might, you know, I, I this is before they even started sending disks out all over the place. Um, and you were on like the CompuServe and you're on, uh, you know, the, the, you know, basic boards that you get through a college computer. And the debate was, will access to, you know, computer and forums and messaging, the ability to communicate everywhere, won't that lead to a enlightened period in society where people have more information, more ability to talk and debate and, and challenge ideas and think about things? And, and won't, won't this be a, you know, the next evolution of harmony, bliss, and, you know, and, and understanding among men. I remember I was arguing, no, more information, more data out there will make things worse. It will make people understand each other less. It will give people more the ability to entrench. More data hurts. And I was, I was absolutely the minority in that class of, of opinion. I think there were like three or four of us. And I suspect the other people who were, you know, partnered up with me were, you know, anarchists who just kind of wanted to go back to caveman days. Um, but it is funny to see, you know, then how the years have played out since that point, because, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it didn't turn out great. Anyway, um, happy days. Thanks for listening. <laughs>